And it can journey anywhere. Supercar, supercar. It travels on land or roams the skies through the heavens' stormy rage. It's Mercury Man, and everyone cries. It's the marvel of the age. Supercar, supercar, supercar. Jimmy, better start looking around for Hudson Field. We'll be back there in about 20 minutes. Gee, I sure do love flying. <laughs> so does Mitch, I reckon. Well, Jimmy, you still want to be a pilot like your big brother? Sure do. Guess it won't hurt to have two pilots in the family. Hold it. We've got trouble. What's the matter, Bill? Engine's cutting up. We're losing altitude fast. We'll have to ditch. Jimmy, stand by to get that raft out. Embrace yourself. Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. Hudson Field, this is Falcon 26 calling Mayday. Engine failure. I'm ditching. Position approximately 30, 30 miles west of Devil's Point. Sea level visibility looks bad. Do you read my position? Over. Roger. Organizing helicopter rescue, over. Roger, Hudson Field. Impact in 30 seconds from now. Falcon 26 out. Field Rescue, this is Navy 49. How do you read? Over. Navy 49, loud and clear. Report on visibility. Rescue Hudsonville, visibility fair. Heavy ground haze in places. Over. Weather report says visibility in crash zone is liable to get worse. You may have difficulty in spotting survivors. Over. It's getting misty. Sure seems we've been here a long time, Mitch. <laughs> They'll pick us up soon, though. Wish I could do something for Bill. I guess the only place for him is in the hospital. Rescue Hudson Field, this is Navy 4-9. I'm now in reported crash zone. Visibility 400 yards. I'm dropping down for better look. Over. Engines, Mitch. I can hear engines. We're gonna be rescued. Hudson Field, this is Navy 49. I've sighted raft and two survivors. Roger, monitoring this frequency. Transmit for fix and good luck. Over. Navy 49. I've lost them again. Visibility getting worse by the minute. I'll make another pass. Roger, 49. Hudson Field from Navy. Visibility closing in fast. I'm dropping marker. We'll report back on next pass. Over and out. Right burners off. Interlock off. Generator off. Controls locked. Cut main power. Well, <laughs> there she is, Mike. Super car. Five years work, and now I think she's nearly ready. I can't wait to fly her, Professor. Well, the next time you'll be in the cockpit, and in another seven days, we'll give her a full-scale test run. Well, great, Professor. It's been a long time, but worth every minute. You hear that, Dr. Beaker? Hey, where's Beaker? Dr. Beaker. Mm, here, here. Beaker, what on earth are you doing? Uh, what was I doing? Oh, yes. Uh, I'm interested in the effect of the engine exhaust on the material of the launching bay. Uh, do you know it's not standing up to it very well, Professor? But anything that's dangerous you seem to be interested in. Now, what's it doing anyway? Melting? Melting? Of course not. Ceramics don't melt. I should have thought you would have known that. It's, uh, it's crazy. We interrupt this program to bring you a special news bulletin. Search and rescue officials have announced that hope for rescue is now fading for Bill and Jimmy Gibson, adrift in a raft 25 miles off Devil's Point, California, after their plane ditched early this morning. Rescue pilots have advised that visibility is now zero, and all planes are returning to base. An early report from a rescue helicopter suggested that the pilot, Bill Gibson, may be injured. Stay tuned to this station for further announcements. How long did you say, Professor? Seven more days? Now, Mike. Now, listen, Professor, what better way to test out the supercar than by rescuing those kids from the sea? Mike, 
we've taken five long years to build this car, and after many failures, we've now reached the point where we think we have the answers. But we only think, Mike. We don't know. It would be... Uh, uh, a good time to try out my uh, clear view apparatus, would it not? Now, don't you start, Beaker. Mike's bad enough. You know, Mike, you always have a way of talking that makes me want to agree with you. But not this time. How long have we been here, Jimmy? I don't know, Bill. Seems like an awful long time. Hasn't there been any sign of a, a rescue plane? Yeah, but it was too misty and they couldn't find us. That means we'll have drifted from the position I gave the field, too. I think we should try and pick them up without delay in... Uh, um, ...the supercar. Yeah, but you know what the professor said, Doc? Not to move until she's thoroughly tested. It's just that time is the one thing we're short of. But I guess he's right. I believe so. I do believe so. For one thing, I should not feel entirely happy about the rocket outlets. Rocket outlets? Why? Well, they are, you see, made of ceramic. And I am mm, suddenly mindful of what happened to the ceramic of the launching bay. Uh, you remember? But, Doc, that's not the same ceramic the rocket nozzles are made of, is it? Admittedly, uh, no. But all the same, uh, for my own peace of mind, if nothing else, I am going to run a heat test on the rocket outlet material. It is just possible that the exhaust gas temperature may be higher than our tests at first uh, uh, indicated. You mind if I stick around? Certainly not. Most certainly not. We will watch a fragment of the ceramic material being subjected to an extremely high temperature uh, through this dark panel of glass. You, you see, the glare is likely to be... Mm, is likely to be... Uh, mm, uh, severe. Well, now, um, first I will build up a considerable electrostatic high-voltage charge in these storage condensers. Mm -hmm. uh, it is, takes a few minutes. The charge must be the precise amount. Why is that? If it were too heavy, in my opinion, and it is only an opinion, there could be an explosion. Thanks. Ah, yes. We are nearly ready. And now, I release the charge, and the thermite bomb fires. I really must overcome this problem. What's the trouble, Doc? I find it most irritating. It takes far too long to bring this liquid to a suitable temperature for infusion. Is this part of the test for the ceramic, Doctor? Test for the ceramic? No, of course not. I'm just making a cup of tea. A cup of tea? But what about the test you just carried out? Was it okay? The test? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> the test. Satisfactory. Ah, most satisfactory. Well, come on, Doc. Let's get working on the car. I will be with you in a moment, pilot. Rome wasn't built in a day, you know. Mm, yes. Satisfactory. Most satisfactory. Jimmy, there's an emergency package in the side of the raft. Enough supplies and water to keep us going for a day or so. Okay, Bill. I'll get you a drink of water. <laughs> Mitch, put that down. <laughs> oh, gee, Mitch. Now look what you've done. Now we've got no food or water. Stand by to test wing retraction. Seems all right, Mike. Got to be sure, though. How about cockpit pressurization? Ready when you are, Professor. Testing cockpit pressurization now. Yeah, that seems okay. Okay by you, Dr. Beaker? Oh, uh, yes, uh, Mike. Uh, that seems to be in order. I read one atmosphere. Is that um, uh, what you have, pilot? On the button, Doctor. 
Well, that is very satisfactory. I'm beginning to think we could run a full-scale flight test in five days. What do you think? I'm glad to hear you say that, Professor. But as you say, we've got to be sure. By the way, uh, anything new over the radio? I guess not, Professor. Why? Oh, nothing. I was just wondering whether they've picked up those two in the raft yet. That's all. I doubt it. I reckon they must be feeling pretty low by now. Wish Mitch hadn't dropped our emergency pack overboard. Nothing we can do about that. It wasn't his fault. <laughs> he didn't know. We just have to hope the rescue boys turn up soon, that's all. Bill, what about the dye markers? They'd help, wouldn't they? Shall I drop one over? No use in this fog. It'd be all right if it was clear. In fact, if it was clear, we'd, we'd stand a better chance all around. This clear view, Gizmo. Should we test it now? Okay with you, Dr. Baker? Certainly. Most certainly. Here goes, then. Smoke generator on. No smoke. That's funny. Dr. Beaker, we don't seem to have any smoke. No, no smoke. Well, now, who's a fool? What's wrong? A small miscalculation. Uh, Professor, I have omitted to remove the uh, uh, safety cap. Uh, one second. Hold on a minute, Mike. Beaker has just gone to look at the smoke rig. Mm. Ah, yes. As I thought, the valve is closed. Just one tug to the right and... <laughs> well, now's the time to see if the clear view works. Switching to clear view now, Professor. Yes, Mike, I can see Beaker clearly. <laughs> but I don't think Beaker can see much. <laughs> All right, Doctor. Starboard three paces. Half ahead port. There. You should be all right now. I guess this means that Gizmo's passed the practical test, eh? Satisfactory. Most satisfactory. Uh, what do you think, pilot? 4 -oh, Doctor. Good for your brainchild, Beaker. Shall we try the navigational video map, too? Sure thing, Professor. Selecting video plan now. Video plan working. We'll switch back to Clearview. I reckon you could see a raft in the sea through the thickest fog. I only wish we could use it to rescue those kids. You never give up, do you, Mike? You make it very difficult for me to say no. Oh, that's okay, Prof. I understand how you feel. Five long years of experiments and hard work on the supercar, and now I'm trying to rush you into a rescue fight. Oh, I don't blame you for refusing. Who's refusing, Mike? What's five years as compared to two lives? Do you still want to go? Well, sure, I still want to go. But we got to work fast if we want to find them alive. Well, if we get down to it, work all night, we may have supercar ready by dawn. Right, Mike. She's ready. Stand by for takeoff. Bika, will you check the instruments for us? Good luck, Mike. Here we go. First time I ever sat in this thing on full boost. Charging pot engine. 5,000. 7,000. 9,000. 11,000. 13,000. 14,000. 15,000. Interlock on. Correct, Vega. Will you confirm, please? Yes, indeed. It's uh, all correct here. Fire one. Charging starboard engine. 5,000. 7,000. 9,000. 
9,500. It's trouble, Professor. I can't hold off much longer. Mike, what does she read now? Still 9.5. I'm switching over to standby. Still reading 9.5. She's overheating, Mike. Cut the engines and get out. I, uh... I think I have a suggestion. Well, let's have it then, quick. Uh, I think, uh, I only think, mind you, that if you were to try turning the starboard engine air feed pressure line on and off in the... Uh, I, in quick succession, uh, you might succeed in clearing it. Uh, but it's only a theory. Okay, theory it is. Here goes. That's done it. Good for you, Dr. Beaker. 9,005, 10,000, 11,000, 12,000. I've got to let her go now, Mike. Interlock on. Here's hoping. Fire two. Okay, Professor. She's firing nicely. Good. open. Half boost. So far, so good. Selecting vertical takeoff now. No chances now, Mike. You know me better than that, Professor. Let her go. Full boost. How's she doing, Mike? All right? Steady. That scared a side slip. I'll change to horizontal flight plan. Then the wings will give you a bit more lateral stability. This is the real test. Give up full boost, horizontal. Here we go. How are you feeling now, Bill? Not bad, Jimmy. Gotta have some water soon. Gotta have some water. Just hold on, Bill. You'll get some water soon. Help must be coming by now. They'll find us. I know they will. It can't be long now. If anyone can find us, I must. Supercar calling base, supercar calling base. According to video plan, I'm approaching crash zone. Switching to clear view. Right, Mike. Select right angle lens. Can't see anything, Professor. They must have drifted during the night. 30, 32, and uh, 3 east uh, for tidal drift. I make it 195 magnetic uh, for about five minutes. Turn on to 195 magnetic, Mike. That's according to Beaker. That's all right by me. He never misses. Sunny and clear up here, but heavy fog below me. Am I at your calculated position, Doc? According to my computations, yes. I'll lose a little altitude then. At this height, I could even miss them with the clear view. Cutting horizontal drive. Altitude 1,100 feet. Hey, it's real thick here. No wonder rescue couldn't find them. Switching to clear view now. Watch your monitor, Dr. Beaker, and keep your fingers crossed. There they are, Mike. It's a good picture. Yeah, that's them, all right. I'm going down for a closer look. Mitch! Mitch! 
What is it? I'm scared. Supercar to base, now flying in heavy mist, preparing for landing on sea. Baker, Mike's landing on the sea. Do you think it will be all right? Uh, well, um... Quickly now, yes or no? In that case, uh, no. Base to supercar, overshoot, repeat, overshoot. Roger, overshooting. Oh, look here, pilot, you can't make a normal approach. Supercar's hull may not stand it. Make a vertical descent. Yes, sir, Dr. Baker. There's that noise again, Mitch. My head's going kind of funny, Mitch. Mitch, what's happening? Mitch. Okay, I'm alongside the raft. Baker, I will turn the switch on the horizontal gyros. It will help hold him steady in the water. Is that altogether wise, Professor? What do you mean, Baker? It may cause supercar to rotate in the water. Poppycock! I beg your pardon. I said poppycock! The engines are still running! Admittedly, yes. But they are only idling, which of course is not quite... Supercar to base, supercar to base. Survivors all aboard, selecting vertical takeoff now. Good show. Good for you, Mike. How are they? I've got the pilot in the back. I think his leg's broken. The boy's okay, but I guess he's out for the count. How are you feeling now? There's no need to worry. You're safe. Everything's going to be all right. Where am I? And where's my brother, Bill? Don't you worry about him. He's all right. He's in the next room, asleep. He's not hurt bad, then. Doc says he's going to be all right. <laughs> You've done very well, Jimmy. But I don't understand. I was in a raft, and I was... I was dreaming that a funny kind of plane or ship or something I'd never seen before, well, it came down and it picked us up. Tell me, Jimmy, was it something like this? Then it wasn't a dream after all. No, it really happened all right. The professor here took five years to build that. What is it? Well, uh, we call it uh, supercar. Supercar? Boy, is that it? Yeah, that's it. I'm glad you like it, Jimmy boy, because as soon as you're well enough, you're coming up with me for a ride in it. Thanks. Hey, I almost forgot. Where's Mitch? Hey, you wouldn't by any chance be talking about that monkey, would you? Because if you are, He's okay, too. I sure am glad to hear that. Can I see him? Sure you can. Now, uh, the last time I saw him, he was... Uh... I say, you know... Uh, uh, there seems to be some sort of uh, chimpanzee loose. Uh, do you know about him, Professor? Really? Uh, he's, uh, he's quite extraordinarily intelligent. It, in some ways rather destructive. I believe, now I come to think of it, it's supposed to be characteristic of chimpanzees. Perhaps I shouldn't leave him alone in that. No, sir. Quick, Professor! Is everything all right? Yeah, Dr. Beaker, everything's under control. It looks as though we've found a co-pilot. Supercar! Supercar! With beauty and grace, as swift as can be. Watch it flying through the air. It travels in space or under the sea, and it can journey anywhere. Supercar, 
supercar. It travels on land or roams the skies through the heavens' stormy rage. It's Mercury Man, and everyone cries. It's the marvel of the age. Supercar. 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 